I recently had a friend give me a few pocket knives and it was actually this first one here uh, that says, I think it says, what part of shall not be infringed do you not understand? Now, understanding that I'm a huge proponent of the Second Amendment, he gifted me this knife and I thanked him, although it's probably not something that I would actually carry with me. But in conversating with him about knives in general, he said, I would like to give you enough knives for you to start a small collection. So he brought to me a bag of about 15, 20, maybe even 30 different knives. And much as I expected, they were all of the Chinese made garden variety knives that you might find at a fair or a swap meet. So it kind of got me thinking about the knife game in general and how a lot of security guards violate five things that I think they should really think about before carrying a pocket knife. Today we're gonna to talk about those five things on today's debrief. Stay tuned. Yeah. Holy smokes, I'm no joke out the bullpen. Bringing nothing but heat, leave you hanging like clothespins. He's a beast when he goes in. Ice cold frozen. The first round draft pick, number one chosen. Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy, a typical security guard. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for today's debrief. As always, we are here to help educate, motivate, train, and inform new and willing to learn security guards. If we can do this, we can help bridge the gap between law enforcement and security guards. And at the end, we can all make more money. So as always, thank you guys for tuning in. So let's get right down to it. We're gonna talk about knives today and if security guards, whether armed or unarmed, should carry those knives. Now guys, a lot of people feel differently and they do in fact utilize knives. A lot of people generally carry uh, a K-bar similar to this. You'll see a lot of law enforcement officers and security guards uh, that have these on their uniform or uh, on their, their molly vest. Uh, but I think that there are five things that we should all think about before actually utilizing a knife as part of our duty kit or a part of our carry. And today I just wanna get right into those. So number five is gonna be optics. Uh, here in Portland, although we have extremely restrictive gun rights in terms of open carry or even concealed carry, there are no laws or regulations regarding carrying knives, right? Now this goes for knives uh, kind of like this or like, let's see if I can open this thing here. <laughs> I don't even know how to open this. How does this open? Jesus Christ. Oh, got it. Knives like, like this, right? Or even a knife similar to, actually this one I kind of like, I might be keeping that one. But there are no regulations in terms of open carrying knives. You can literally, and a lot of people do, carry machetes. You can carry machetes around town. You can open carry machetes. You can carry them into stores. I deal with them on a daily basis basis. So my point in saying this is that you as a security guard do not want to blend in with the environment around you. Most of our homeless community, a lot of our criminal element, our drug addicted element are constantly carrying knives of different types. As a security guard, you are there to not only be professional, but also to uh, be a visual deterrent and to be a visual stand-in for, for actual law enforcement. So you wanna make sure that you're not doing something that is lending yourself to the criminal element and the same people that you're there to protect against. I know a lot of people feel differently about that. K-bars, uh, tactical knives, things like that. However, to the everyday average common person, they do not see a difference between something like this and something like this, all right? So remember, optics, number five, optics and how it looks to the everyday average person. Number four, and this is more uh, focused on the unarmed security guards that are working, um, it gives you an option uh, to make you less likely to de-escalate. If you're working in unarmed security, you're working an unarmed security contract, for the most part, aside from maybe like pepper spray, you don't have anything on you that would give you that false sense. And I say this, that false sense of security 
of having a another tool at your disposal, right? Even working as an arm guard, I see a lot of times guys put that duty belt on, they put that vest on, they put that pistol on, and it kind of gives them this false sense of security that they can be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more keyed up uh, when dealing with people in the general public or dealing with that negative aspect of society. You guys saw the video that we put up a couple of weeks ago where the security guard, he gets so amped up and he gets that tunnel vision dealing with the negative situation that it actually led him to shoot and kill someone. If you are working as an unarmed security guard, you are less likely to de-escalate the more tools and items that you add to your belt. Aside from that, by having that tool, by having that knife uh, at your person, on your person, uh, at your disposal, it makes you less likely to de-escalate a situation where if you were completely bare and you didn't have it at your disposal, you would be more likely to watch what you say, how you say it, and to whom you say it to. Number three, and quite frankly, this could have been number two or number one, is that you as an unarmed guard who is wearing or carrying a knife on your uniform or person are introducing a weapon into a negative situation that potentially potentially wouldn't have been there otherwise. If you're dealing with someone and you have to go hands-on, if you're dealing with someone and it becomes a situation where you're actually in a struggle and you are now introducing either purposely or um, um, non-purposely, I can't think of the word for that right now, but if you're introducing that weapon by, by no intention of your own, just by having it on you, there is now something else for you to contend with. Again, we talk so much about the lack of training in the security industry. We talk about that from the very high end all the way to the very low end. If you're working as an unarmed security guard or if you're working as an armed security guard, introducing a knife into the equation puts you in a position where you can be seriously harm injured or killed or or puts you in a situation where you have to seriously harm injure or kill someone in self-defense guys not having this on you is the best way to not have to deal with it so number three is introducing another weapon into the situation that potentially wouldn't have been there had it not been on your uniform Number two, and much like number three, this could have easily have been number one, is that by having a knife on your uniform and in immediate access, you could actually be breaking the law. Now, you're going to need to check your local listings, but here in Portland, if you're working a unarmed security contract, you cannot be armed with a lethal weapon. Now, in order to carry a firearm, which is considered a lethal weapon because it's clearly able to kill someone, you have to have a certain DPSST certification. We currently do not have a DPSST certification for carrying a knife. Now, a pocket knife is one thing, but if you're actually using a tactical knife similar to this or any of the other styles that I've shown, by having that on your uniform while working an unarmed contract, you are in possession of a lethal weapon. Guys, listen, you have to understand again that you are held to a different standard when you're under contract and you're working as an agent of the state. By having a knife on your uniform or indirect uh, access to you, you could actually not only be violating your contract, you could be breaking the law. And speaking of breaking the law, that brings me to number one. If you were to actually run afoul of the law and end up in court and you're having to defend yourself, guys, there's no certification for having a knife. There's no tactical certification. There's no practical certification. There is no current DPSST certification. And as far as I'm aware, there is no unarmed certification for carrying a knife. If you find yourself in a situation where that knife is utilized on you or you pull that knife and use it on someone else and you find yourself in court in front of a prosecuting attorney, a district attorney, or a judge, what are you gonna stand on? The fact that that's a cool knife or the fact that you've seen people wearing that on their uniform in YouTube videos is not gonna keep you from having a manslaughter charge or potentially a murder charge levied against you. At the very, very least, a civil liability for any person that you've harmed or hurt. Guys, you have to remember, if you're working an unarmed contract, that means unarmed. You can, by policy, 
utilize anything that is less than lethal, but a knife is a lethal weapon. You have to separate what you do in your daily life, walking around carrying those knives, which I told you here in Portland, completely legal to do, but when you're working as an agent, an agent of the state, and you're working under contract, you are held to a different standard. Guys, you don't have to agree with me, but if you find yourself in this situation, I guarantee you will understand exactly what I've laid out here. So as always, I wanna hear your feedback, your thoughts, your comments. If you disagree with me, let me know, let me know why. And if you are aware of knife training certifications for security guards, please, by all means, list those and we will pump those so that people can be made aware. As always, I wanna thank you guys for being a part of what we're doing here, being a part of our community. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, watch yourself, be careful, and watch your six, and be great, okay? Be great.